This is MTV, where we do it 24 hours a day. I'm JJ, and I'll show you John Waite. Sneak preview video from the Thompson Twins. And in the studio this hour, John Paul Jones. Also, the world... Glenn's next solo album, along with the track that he plans to write for the movie he's acting in, which is titled Let's Get Harry. That's the world premiere of Glenn Fry's You Belong to the City. And we've got Mr. John Paul Jones, bass player and keyboardist extraordinaire in the studio with us. But right now, the video continues with the latest from the best new artists of the year at the second annual MTV Video Music Award. This is still here. That's great, Amy. Of you. We're supposed to be a band. TV and in the studio is a face I'm sure you're familiar with. That's John Paul Jones. Oh, Jonesy, an old friend of mine. Scream for Help is the first music that we've heard from you, Jonesy, since uh, Zeppelin's last album in 79. Mm -hmm. right. um, what's been happening in between all of that time? Well, it has been a long time, you're right. Um, I haven't committed anything to record in that time. But I've been pretty busy um, doing uh, contemporary classical music, which is great fun, you know. Um, uh, I appeared in a uh, Give My Regards to Broad Street, standing next to Dave Evans, you know, when the pillars fall down. <laughs> Great time, I tell you. And um, writing the incidental music for the film, uh, the source music, which is what the album consists of, you know, pop songs, different styles. Good challenge, you know, good fun. How did you happen to choose a soundtrack album instead of like a, you know... Uh, as, as far as, you know, a bunch of songs put together like normally for an album? Well, you know me, JJ. Um, my interests in music are diverse, to say the least, and I really didn't know where to start <laughs> on a solo album. And so I thought, uh, on a film, you know, they say what you've got to do and how long they want it for. And I thought, well, that looks easy, actually. It yep. wasn't too bad. You have a studio in your, in your home. Yeah. Mm. Makes it easier. Yes. <laughs> what was it like working with, uh, with Jimmy again? Great. Great. Um, crackback was done in the studio. Um, it's kind of funny, actually. We had a, a, a drummer that was with the um, uh, National Youth Jazz Orchestra. And he doesn't play much rock and roll, but he's really enjoying himself. And halfway through the session, he creeps to the engineer and says, uh, this session is uh, kind of heavier than I think it is, isn't it? You know? Who are these people? And, uh, you know, Led Zeppelin, and like, oh, wow, well, you know. <laughs> great. But it was just like old times, like writing the riff in the studio. All right. Josie's going to hang out with us for the rest of this hour. You promised to do that. Oh, right. This chair has <laughs> got to do. <laughs> you want to take it with you when you leave? Please. please. <laughs> I think it's stuck to me, actually. John waits every step of the way. That's coming up within 10 minutes. He's a fine vocalist. Hold on. And that is John Waite in the studio with us is John Paul Jones, formerly the bass player and keyboard player with the mighty Led Zeppelin, and got a new album out, Scream for Help. One of the things when Zeppelin was in existence, JP, is, is that Peter Grant was such a, played such a formidable role with you guys. What's uh, happening with Peter right now? I haven't heard much from him. Uh, I haven't heard much from him either. Um, he plays a formidable role. You're right. He's a formidable man. He could play no other role. I mean, um, I think he's involved in uh, in some you know management of, of new groups, perhaps. But I really haven't kept in touch. Do you, do you keep in touch with the rest of the members of the band? As far as far as uh, Robert is concerned, and Jimmy as well. Obviously, you played with Jimmy, but do you often? We phone? bumped into each other quite recently. Yeah. <laughs> other than live. Oh, aid, yeah. You know? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, we our paths cross quite a lot, actually. We'll, we'll be back to speak some more with John Z. Uh, right after we uh, take care of a little bit of business, and also Rod Stewart's Baby Jane is coming up within 15 minutes. I was right in the middle of a caramel when I found gold. We noticed in the liners there that you give credit to Jacinda Jones. Mm -hmm. Who's Jacinda Jones, a co-writer? Uh, my lyricist, uh, extraordinaire, yes. uh, middle daughter. It's a family show, I tell you. <laughs> and uh, she writes great lyrics. She's a talented pianist, actress. She's, I think, doing an Agamemnon production at this very moment. Heavy really, stuff. Really, really. 
running around in, in you know, those Greek masks, bumping into each other. That's what you have to do, right? You've got to remember the lines and try not to bump into the furniture or other actors who are coming in. But she's, she's great. She's a fine writer. You know, actually, we've noticed as far as your writing is concerned, in the early days of, of Zeppelin, you know, Plant and Page usually took most of the credit for most of the songs written. But by the time you got through In Through the Outdoor, your name was all over the place. What took so long for you to actually start to become such a prolific writer? Well, I, I was writing quite a bit. Um, you know, Black Dog and all this. Quite a bit before. But I found the trick on In Through the Outdoor. If you, if you got to rehearsal early, like, you know, Robert was there, we wrote the songs, you know, Jimmy come in, hey, how have we done it? You know, it's really easy. <laughs> Hang out with us a bit longer. ABC, Martin Fry with a different look than this one, Be Near Me. The message is perfectly simple. The meaning is clear. Rod Stewart with Baby Jane. Rod Stewart at one time, I remember, it was uh, almost going to be managed by Peter Grant, right? Yeah, I remember. Mickey Mouse together, yeah. right? Yeah. John Paul it. Jones in the studio with us this hour. This seems to be the year, in a way, of the resurgence of Led Zeppelin from the reunion in Live Aid, needless to say, to this controversial book that's just come out, Hammer of the Gods. As a matter of fact, what do you think of that book? Or do you Not have a lot, JJ. Not a lot. It's, um, apart from being garbage, it's totally without humor. Um, no. And basically, the book kind of suggests you were the, only, you were the only good boy in I there. wasn't even there, according to the book. <laughs> you know, I wondered, was it about the same group? I didn't actually check, you know. Uh, no, I must admit, I have to, you know, be partial, needless to say, because you know I was there many, on many of those occasions. I felt well, you know, the same. I mean, yeah, I felt there was garbage as well. Did we like the same group to you? Yeah. No. Listen, was it the Live Aid that prompted... In fact, we're going to have to have some pictures, because there's a book, the Live Aid book. Oh, great. That's out, right? And, and needless to say, everybody was excited by Zeppelin getting back together again for Live Aid. And these are some of the pictures that we've got from the book. And was that Live Aid itself, uh, was that particular benefit, the thing that prompted the band to get back together for a reunion? And possibly a reunion tour? Oh, I love that picture. I love that picture. <laughs> it's like... I'm what is the next you? chord? <laughs> what is, where are we? Uh, no, well first, the book. The book. The best ten bucks I think I've ever seen. Beautiful book. Lots of pictures, great chords obviously. Um, you know, the wizard, wizardry of Geldof. Mm -hmm. One of the things for me that's interesting about all this is that um, he, he's shown, he's galvanized all these people you know, from all different walks of life into action. And everybody now knows that they can actually do something. You know, no sitting back saying, oh God, you know, it's terrible, all this poverty. Act. What can you do? But everybody's out there going, well, yeah, well, you know, put some money in here and put this on and put that on. I think that's marvelous. Mm -hmm. So do I. And that was the thing that prompted. How did he get you all together for this? Because I know you're like off somewhere and they're all over the world. Yeah, well, actually, I think, um, I think Robert was going to, uh, play with one of the bands and then Jimmy was in the area and he said well let's get together and uh, then well as we're getting together why don't we do a Zeppelin number maybe and then I, I heard about it from Robert and uh, rang him up and said well you'll need a bass player of course who's going to rehearse the drummers you know and uh, it happened. Was it a good experience? Oh, what? You know looking across the stage and seeing the same silly faces again. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> marvelous. Incredible day. One last thing, so we can clear this up, actually, for what we had heard, you know, rumors that, that there would actually be a reunion tour. Is that really going to take place? Rumors of, uh, what? Led Zeppelin doing... Led, 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 Led who? <laughs> evasive, are you again? Possibly? Ev 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 no, no, no. Me never, no. Um, there is no Led Zeppelin. There is no Led... Maybe projects. You know, it, it was great playing, and... We didn't see why we should say we should never play again together. You know, so maybe that could happen. Okay. Good seeing you again, JP. And you, JP. Thompson Twins, Lay Your Hands on Me. That's the latest from this British group, and it's coming up within 10 minutes here on MTV.